I'm going to, that I have here, uh, I'm going to just quickly show you guys how to make a geodatabase and then uh, import shape files that you may have into that geodatabase. Um, so to start off with, I've got ArcGIS Pro open, as you can see. And uh, th these, I've loaded in the world imagery as my base map. And then, as you can see in my contents pane over here, I have several shape files. Now, you guys don't have access to this shape files. This is just example shape files that I have. Um, I've got rail stations, uh, fishing spots, uh, campgrounds, railroads, wetlands, lakes, streams, and Wyoming major roads. Um, and so these are all just individual shape files, and I have them here on my desktop. I have them in this folder called sample shape files. And if you open if if you open this and then look at the different folders I have. So if I click in each one of these, note, remember a shapefile is made up of all of these files. And so the whole, the, the, the good points about it, uh, having your data in a geodatabase is you can take all of these shapefiles, for example, and wrap them up bundle them up into one location so that they're not in folders potentially being lost or all over your computer. Um, so instead of having all these folders, all of this data is going to be in one location and this will become hopefully more clear as we go along with the video. So I've just loaded these shape files in the ArcGIS Pro and again I'm going to show you how to make a geodatabase and then how to get all of these shape files into the geodatabase. <laughs> Excuse me. So the first step is creating the geo database. So I'm going to go to my uh, I'm going to go to my view tab in ArcGIS Pro, and I'm going to open the catalog pane, and that opens over here on the right. And I am going to go to the to the spot on my computer where I want the geo database to exist. So for me, I'm going to go to folders, and I may need to actually make a um, a folder connection and I'm just going to have this on my desktop. You may want to put it in another folder for the exercise that you're doing somewhere else on your computer but for me and, and this is just an example I'm going to put it on my desktop. So I'm going to right click in the white space here and I'm going to say add a folder connection and I'm going to add the folder connection to my desktop And actually on my, so there we go, I'm going to highlight desktop, click OK. Let me try this again here. It seemed like it's letting me uh, make a connection right to my desktop. So I'm actually going to, um, oh, here we go. I need to get it over here on the right side. So I click computer on the left and I highlight a desktop on the right and I'm going to click OK. And there you can see I've got a connection to my desktop. Now I'm going to open up my desktop and you can see I've got my sample shape files folder here. And I'm, again, the first step here is I'm going to create the geo database. So I'm going to right click where I want this to be, in this case on my desktop, and I'm going to say new and I'm going to say on a new file geodatabase. Okay, so a new file geodatabase. There you can see uh, it created it. Now based on the data I have in my map, this is all sort of Wyoming data. Um, so I'm going to name my geodatabase uh, Wyoming GIS data. Okay. Now the nice thing with the geo database is, so the way you need to think of this is you can think of a geo database as a filing cabinet. So I've made my filing cabinet, 
Now the next thing I can have in my filing cabinet is drawers. And they're not called drawers in a geodatabase, they're called uh, featured data sets. Okay, so this is a featured data set is a way to further organize your data. Now if I look at my data here, I've got roads. Um, I guess the way you want to think about this is how, do, how, what would be a logical way to organize this data? So I've got, for example, several water features. I could make a featured data set or a drawer called water or Wyoming water and in it could go streams, lakes, and wetlands. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to right click on my geodatabase over here and I'm going to say new and I'm going to click on feature data set. And so I want this to exist in my Wyoming GIS data geodatabase. The feature data set name, I'm going to call it Wyoming Water. And then you can give your feature data set um, a projection. And any data you move into that feature data set will have this projection that you give it. So I'm going to pick a projection that's suitable for Wyoming. In this case, I might pick uh, oh, I might pick a projected coordinate system, maybe UTM, and, and maybe Zone 13 North. Again, you could pick any projection you want. This might be suitable for Wyoming. So I'm going to UTM Zone 13 North, click OK. I'm going to click Run down here, and it's going to create that feature data set. Okay, and then let's go ahead and, so wetlands, lakes, and streams are going to go in there. Maybe I could have another feature data set called uh, transportation. And inside that might be my Wyoming roads, uh, my railroads, and my rail stations. So while the geoprocessing tool for creating a feature data set is open, I'm just going to change my feature data set name to Wyoming transportation. I'm going to leave it in the same projection. I'm going to click run and you can see that's created. Okay, geodatabase, two feature data sets here. Finally I've got, uh, well it looks like I've got fishing spots and camping spots. So maybe I could make a feature data set called recreation. So I'll make another one called Wyoming Recreation, and I'll click Run, and I'll close this tool because I don't need it anymore. And so here you can see I've got my Wyoming GIS data geodatabase. Inside that, I've got my drawers of my filing cabinet or feature data sets called Wyoming Recreation, Transportation, and Water. As you can see, there's no data in here yet. I've just built the filing cabinet or the geodatabase, and I've just built the drawers or the feature data sets. Now I need to get this data over here in my drawing, in my contents pane, over into my geodatabase. So just going to do this uh, one at a time. So I'm going to right click on Wyoming Roads. I'm going to go to Data, Export Features. My input is Wyoming Roads, obviously. <clears throat> my output, I need to tell it where to save this. So I'm going to go to my desktop, my Wyoming GIS Data Geodatabase transportation and I'm going to name it Wyo I'm just going to name it actually these are major roads click save click run you can see it added the major roads over here so once it gets added to my map right here I'm going to delete the old ones. I'm going to right click on the old ones and remove it. 
And notice here in my catalog pane, Wyoming Transportation, I've got the major roads. Okay. Let's do the same thing uh, for the rail stations and the railroad. So, uh, let's see here, rail station. I want it to exist in my transportation feature data set, and I'm going to call this rail stations. Click run. Again, you can see it added it to my geo database. It added it to my map. I'm going to remove the old one. And finally, we need to do railroads. Okay, you can see I've got my geo database or my filing cabinet. I've got my drawer of Wyoming transportation or in this case feature data sets. And I've got my, and these are called feature classes. My actual data in a geo database is called a feature class. And in this case, I have major roads, rail stations, and railroads. I'm going to keep on going uh, with the other ones here. So let's do uh, let's do the uh, water features. So I'm going to do streams. <coughs> now I don't want streams in Wyoming transportation. I want them in Wyoming water. So I'm just going to name them streams again. Run the tool. Yep. There's my streams inside of Wyoming Water. I'm going to remove the old one. Uh, let's do lakes. Call these lakes again. Click save. Click run. I'm going to remove the old data. And let's do uh, the last one for this is wetlands. And then the final two is going to be campgrounds and fishing. This is going in the recreation feature data set. I'll call this fishing locations. And my last one is going to be campgrounds. I'll call this camping. Spots. Okay, so you can see here again, I've got my filing cabinet or geo database called Wyoming GIS data. I've got my three drawers or feature data sets called Wyoming Recreation, Wyoming Transportation, Wyoming Water. And inside my drawers, I have my actual files, or in this case, data called feature classes with all my data in it. Okay? So you can see these the shape files are no longer called shape files, they're called feature classes, and they're all stored in one nice, neat, tidy location. And if I look at this file on my desktop, you can see here it is right here, it just looks like a folder. And if I open this folder up, it just looks like stuff that I, I can't even recognize. I don't even know what these files are. 
they certainly don't look like anything I, I would know on my desktop, but when you open it up in ArcGIS Pro, it's it's my data, it's my it's my GIS data. And notice the good thing is is it's all in one file as opposed to the my shapefile folder where I have all of these folders with all of these files in each one. So hopefully you can see the geo database is it's a lot better for organization. Uh, it's a lot better for storage. Um, and it just keeps your GIS data cleaner and, and neater on your computer uh, and, and better organized. So hopefully that video makes sense of how to create a geo database and how to populate it with existing uh, GIS data. Again, if you have any questions, make sure you give me a call or uh, give me a call, email, or text me. And thanks, and we'll talk to you on the next video.